the last part of this chapter gives an overview of energy utilities used in chemical process plant uh, and it is common for utility system to serve a site rather than just a plant and previously when we have been considering utilities and grand composite curves we have assumed that our individual process is completely isolated any utilities uh, that the process may require come from the utility producer associated with a particular process. And an example might be the excess heat below the pinch of grand composite curve that is used uh, for steam generation. So what is the purpose of that steam generation? Certainly, uh, we cannot use the steam within the actual chemical process. However, we could use it externally perhaps for power production or passing it to uh, another uh, chemical process. However, in fact, chemical processes are often grouped together in total site and uh, consequently a utility system uh, supplies all those chemical processes with the utilities that they require. And this means, uh, for example, steam producers are shared among the chemical process that required the steam and this obviously um, reduces the number of steam producers that we need um, and uh, for example having one utility boiler for each chemical process on a total site would be a waste of capital when a utility boiler could service a number of chemical processes so we shall see uh, how these chemical processes and their utility requirements can interact in a total uh, site in this particular part of the lecture. Uh, here we distinguish uh, between site ut utilities and energy utilities. And our focus is on the energy utilities, including boilers, furnaces, steam generation, power generation, using steam, uh, as well as the cooling utilities. So please take a moment to uh, appreciate the wider range of utilities that are typically needed on a chemical process site. Here is an overview of sites energy utility systems and at the top left corner you have a boiler that, use, uh, that uses fuel and sometimes uh, waste products from the process to convert the water into steam. Uh, the steam is produced at very high pressure uh, but generally not used at pressures above 40 bar and this is largely because of the cost of the piping systems for transporting steam at very high pressures around the site. Uh, the steam can be let down through a steam turbine um, and uh, this steam turbine can produce uh, steam at different pressures so we can have very high pressure steam, medium pressure steam and low pressure steam. The power is generated um, that is generated by the steam turbine can be used uh, on site along with the power that can be imported from a power station. Okay, or the surplus power can be uh, can also be exported off the site and sold. The steam is then transported across site uh, in different steam mains that we call them steam lines that have high pressure main, low pressure main or medium pressure main and then we provide steam throughout the process using these steam uh, mains. Also shown on the figure is the option of uh, combusting gases um, fuel to provide both power like using a gas turbine like the case here and heat typically generated by steam so you can use it for both purposes. The bottom of the diagram shows uh, a typical cooling water circuit where the cold water uh, leaving the cooling system is distributed to different processes that have cooling needs. After being used for cooling, the cooling water is returned to the cooling water where it is cooled by evaporation of some of it. A typical configuration of a steam system has low pressure, medium pressure and high pressure steam mains, although the diagram doesn't show the very high pressure uh, level of the typical boiler and the pressure of the steam mains vary from side to side but these values that are given here these are the typical uh, of a boiler system the steam uh, temperature is dependent on the steam pressure 
as expected and the cost uh, is based on the amount of the power that can be generated uh, depending on the pressure of the steam. Uh, we have considered heat recovery earlier in this section where the surplus heat is recovered and reused usually within the plant and usually by the nearby process unit. Another way of reusing and recovering surplus heat is across a site that is between different plants and different processes. So let's uh, have a look at an example of a site analysis and how we can recover um, heat between different sites. So here we have two processes. We have process A and process B, and then we have their respective grand composite curves. Above the process pinch, we have heat sink. And then at uh, below the process pinch, we have heat sources for process A and process B. We also assume in this particular case that the pockets here are cut off and we don't use these pockets for data extraction. So basically, uh, we are making the assumption that our pockets are additional areas of heat recovery, as we saw in the um, individual site pinch analysis. So above our process pinch, we have uh, our excess cold streams that need uh, to have process utility heating applied to them. And we can see that we have three areas of um, uh, excess cold streams here, here, and here. And uh, these streams can be uh, extracted as, as streams because they are cold streams. They have a supply temperature and a target temperature, supply temperature and a target temperature. So we can extract them from this grand composite curve. And they also have uh, their duties as well. So we can extract them on this TH diagram. Similarly, for process B, uh, we can also extract these cold streams. Again, we are ignoring this pocket here, and uh, we have again uh, another excess cold stream that is here. We have the supply temperature and the target temperature, and then we have another one that is here, that is supply temperature and the target temperature, and both of these streams have heat duties, so we can extract them from this grand composite curve. So these one, two, three, four, and five are areas of excess cold streams that need um, to supply heat in the form of utility and these can be combined to form our site sink profile like we can see here. Now below the pinch uh, both for our process A and process B we have heat source region and we have our hot streams that uh, contains heat that um, is not needed by our cold streams and again we have removed our um, heating pockets in, in both these processes. We are, we are not extracting the data for it. And uh, all these uh, hot streams here, 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 and here. So we have four hot streams and all these hot streams, they have their um, uh, target and supply and target temperature, supply and target temperature, and their heat duties. So this information can be extracted from this um, process A and process B grand composite curve, and then we can combine them to form our um, total site uh, composite curve. And here now we have the heat source part of our uh, site composite curve. So our total uh, site profile then represents all the heating uh, that is required uh, to be provided by our total site utility system and all the heat that is uh, in excess and can be either passed to cooling water or could actually be used for steam generation uh, which can be used to offset the amount of steam that is provided by our total site utility boilers. If you recall your uh, material on grand composite curve from process integration lectures, um, we know that the grand composite curve uh, is based on shifted temperatures. So consequently, all uh, our uh, stream data that we extracted in the form of supply and target temperatures from the grand composite curve in the, in the previous slide have been shifted either up or down by half a delta T min in terms of their temperatures. So all our cold streams here uh, have been uh, shifted up by half a delta T min from the grand composite temperature 
and then we further shift them up by half a delta d min. Um, so consequently, all our cold curves here, they are now shifted by uh, a whole delta d min uh, compared to their original temperatures. Similarly, our hot streams here, uh, representing our um, uh, source profile, have originally been shifted down in temperature by half a delta d min. And uh, we, when we extract them from our grand composite curve, uh, we then shift um, down by a further half a delta d min to, to draw our site or uh, source profile. Okay, so consequently, all these streams of our, our site profile have been shifted down by a whole delta d min compared to their uh, original stream temperatures. So in the previous slides, we saw that how we can construct our uh, site source profile and site sink profile uh, by extracting the data um, from our grand composite curve site processes. And those processes are going to be using utilities from our central utility systems. So we can now use this information given here uh, in order to target the steam that we are going to use or generate in our processes. So let's uh, have a look at our site sink profile. So here, um, to satisfy the, the heating requirement of our, uh, of our process, we can use different pressure uh, mains of steam. So we have the LP steam, MP steam, and HP steam. And so we want to maximize the use of low pressure steams, that is LP and MP steam. And we, we want to minimize the use of HP steam. So for example, here we could have supplied this uh, heat by HP steam, but we want to use MP steam because it is much cheaper compared to HP steam. On the other side, we have the uh, site source profile. So we can use this excess heat in the, in the site to generate steam. So we can generate MP steam here and LP steam, uh, depending on the, the temperature range that we are in. And we want to maximize the use of both of these uh, pressure steam here. And then uh, the rest of this heat can be uh, given to the cooling water. Again, we can provide this extra heat to cooling water, but we, because the pressure, the, the temperature of this steam is still higher um, that we can generate LP steam. So we actually prefer to use it for LP steam generation than giving it to the cooling water uh, or to raise the temperature of the cooling water for boiler feed. Now, if we ignore our site source profile and just look at our site sink profile. So to satisfy the site heating demand, our utility system needs to provide uh, these different levels of um, steam in these targeted quantities, okay? But if we have a site source profile, some of the steam that is generated by this surplus heat can be used to offset the, the, the amount of steam that we need to use from our centralized utility boilers, okay? So for example, instead of this MP steam coming from our utility boiler, it can be used, it can be provided by this MP steam generated from our heat source. And similarly, some part of our LP steam uh, can be used to offset the quantity of LP steam coming from our boilers. So the site analysis uh, method accounts for different levels of steam on the site, recognizing that steam has to be at a suitable temperature to be useful in a particular situation. Uh, we end the chapter with a quick summary and overview of our learning outcomes. So chapter four considered the heat recovery layer of the onion. We discussed the value of pinch analysis for estimating minimum heating and cooling requirements. And we talked about different degrees of freedom to further minimize the energy utilization or energy consumption of our hen network. Okay, so we talked about um, utility paths, utility loops, and stream splitting. Uh, we also considered how process simulation results uh, can give the information needed for pinch analysis 
and how we can extract the data from process flow sheet to perform pitch analysis and uh, we discussed um, uh, several guidelines around the extraction of data and how we should be extracting the data for our pinch analysis. Finally, we noted that steam is used for heating at various levels and also for power generation. We looked at site-wide recovery of heat from individual plants and processes. Uh, this part of the chapter outlined the concept of site utility target, which can help to quantify and evaluate energy integration opportunities. The learning outcomes uh, from this chapter are summarized here, where uh, high level learning outcomes relate to using pinch analysis to aid synthesis of the process flow sheet towards energy efficient operations. And we also saw um, how we can use the total site to uh, total site analysis to perform a better plant wise recovery compared to a process recovery so that is all for this part thank you for your time